Welcome to Connecting with Coincidence with psychiatrist Bernard David Beitman, MD. Dr. Beitman is the founder of the Coincidence Project. The project encourages people like you to tell each other coincidence stories. To learn more about Dr. Beitman's work, put Connecting with Coincidence in your web browser. You'll find his book, his Psychology Today blog, and the interviews from this podcast. And now your host, Bernard Beitman, MD. Welcome to Connecting with Coincidence. I am your host, Dr. Bernie Beitman, MD. Remember, <clears throat> meaningful coincidences illuminate the invisible currents that connect and unify us. Please like and subscribe to this podcast by pushing the buttons down there. It really helps us get our word out. I'm going to tell another coincidence story, and they're best told if you have a nice title for it. And that at the end of it, you uh, talk about what the meaning might be. This title is called uh, One Good Turned Ankle Deserves Another. A psychiatrist friend of mine had twisted her ankle. Her orthopedic surgeon put a light cast on her ankle and said, it's going to be okay. Several months later, it was not okay. A tennis friend suggested that the psychiatrist go to a physical therapist named Bart for rehabilitation. She ignored the suggestion. Shortly afterward, a, a patient of hers walked into her office, having recently recovered from a sprained ankle. The patient was wearing the very same tennis shoes that the therapist had worn when she had twisted her ankle. Well, hello, she said to herself. She then asked the patient to whom she had gone for physical therapy. To Bart was the reply. The therapist got the message, went to Bart, and soon her ankle was healing. The similar shoes, the same physical therapist led to a similar positive outcome. It would not have happened if the psychiatrist had not paid attention to this message and then acted on it. These are critical parts of any coincidence. You got to see it and then act on it. The dog that trots about finds a bone. So many potentially meaningful coincidences disappear unnoticed and unappreciated. Our guest today is Terry Marks Tarlow. She is a clinical psychologist in private practice in Santa Monica, California. She is adjunct professor at Pacifica Graduates Institute in Santa Barbara and California Institute of Integral Studies in San Francisco. She is the author of numerous books on clinical intuition, creativity, interpersonal neurobiology, and nonlinear science. She attempts to walk the walk, and I would suggest dance the talk, by illustrating all of her books, doing yoga and dancing jazz, and ballet. Ballet. She has co-founded and curated Mirrors of the Mind, the psychotherapist as artist, for the past 10 years, as well as written libretto for two operas that opened in New York City with ballets. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Bernie. It's a pleasure to be here with you. It's really was fun talking with you beforehand because we're going to be talking about fractals and we're going to try to talk about the relationship between fractals and synchronicity in a way that I can understand and uh, hopefully others will. But let's start off with one of your best synchronicity stories. Okay, um, so I will tell you about a patient that I have been working with for now probably more than 20 years. And uh, this woman came to me um, with great trauma. Um, and uh, we had been doing very, very deep work. And one thing about this story that I think is important is that from the beginning, this woman has been having what we call transference dreams, which means dreams about me and about our process together. And uh, so we engaged in 
uh, very intensive work for a long time. She had um, a history of incest and physical abuse, emotional abuse, a lot of, lot of, uh, a lot of trauma. And we were doing very, very good work. And then there came a period of time when we it just got kind of flat when nothing much was happening it was just uh, i was a little bored which was very very different because this woman is very exciting the work was very exciting very engaging but uh throughout this stage um I was sort of feeling stale until one day this woman came in and we had been doing a lot of dream work up till this point and the dreams had often a repetitive quality to them but one day this woman brought a dream to me that was completely different than anything she'd ever brought before and what was remarkable about it was that it was very very much like my own childhood dreams and i as a child had many many tidal wave dreams um, they were of different kinds where sometimes there were things like furniture and people in the water and, and this sort of thing. Um, they were your classic anxiety type of dream. Um, and in this dream, she had uh, a tidal wave. There were two tidal waves and her child was there. And the fact that she brought my own dream essentially into therapy, absolutely shocked and startled me out of this state that I had been in and helped me realize the impasse, the source of the impasse was as much in me as uh, it was in the material we were talking about. And I was able at the at the point that she brought in my childhood dream, it helped me to connect with the emotions that I felt at the time I was having those dreams, all the anxiety that I felt. It broke through the defensive barriers that I had up that I wasn't aware of. And instantly, we were off to the races again. We were back into that very engaged, open state, and the therapy can uh, progress. So the, her bringing me that dream helped us break through the impasse by the way that I um, gained awareness about what was going on, which was totally invisible to me up until that point, to both of us up until that point. Did I understand this correctly, that it helped you resolve some of your childhood anxieties? Not that it helped me resolve my childhood anxieties, because really I had already resolved them. It helped me return to them, which helped me get uh, regain my empathy. Uh, so it was like it was a little pocket of um, of not being self-aware. And I suppose you could say that in a way that helped me resolve a piece of my childhood anxieties that um, had lay almost dormant or sleeping for all of these years. Uh, so yeah, I mean that- but in, a, but in, in a little bit it did. Yes. But the major thing it did for you, which these mirror coincidences in therapy and in life can do, is it increased your empathy for your patient. That's correct. Yes, it, it helped me reconnect with her by reconnecting with this side of myself um, that I that was being triggered by the material she was bringing in. Um, but I didn't realize it because instead I was shut down rather than triggered well, you, by it. Well, you were bored and uh, that the, when, yes. whenever you're bored in therapy, it means you would rather be doing something else and but you don't know what it is so she helped puncture the boredom exactly and, and it, open you up so that you could open your heart to her and she could connect with you and this these mirror coincidences like this deserve continuing attention because they're so valuable in helping people connect with each other synchronicity as as empathic connectors 
Exactly. I couldn't have said that that more articulately. That's exactly what what happened there. And yep. it, it's going to happen out in real life, too, because a lot of times the, the problems you have, other people also have. And so you can see them in other people. They're mirrors to you. It's not therapy is a wonderful laboratory to examine yes. stuff like this. But this happens out there, too, in, in the wild. <laughs> That's right. And if you want to know the, the content of what I was pushing aside was that she, this was a stage where she got very preoccupied with her husband and the way he was using his eyes to look at other women. I was bored and I think of boredom as a defense. So what you were saying absolutely makes sense. Um, I was bored because I did not believe that her husband had any interest in other women. So I was just feeling like she was making this up. It was a distraction from what was really important. But the truth in my childhood was that my father was continually having affairs. And I think that that was painful for me to connect to through what she was saying. And instead, I blocked it out. And by getting in touch with my own childhood anxieties, um, often people have anxieties like tidal wave dreams when they don't know what they're anxious about. And I didn't know as a child what was going on between my parents. So um, that's what I got in touch with. Was well, that's that. a lot to get in touch with again. Yeah. I mean, I could even feel a little bit of what you're telling me about. It. The tidal wave in both your situations is this total destruction of the relationships mm -hmm. in, that are so crucial to you. Mm -hmm. it's that that's that's very threatening now i understand mm -hmm. what was being threatened for yes. you and for her and how you couldn't get to it and how you did and boy that's a wonderful breakthrough and i was able to share that breakthrough with with my patient and um this is why we were off to the races again together and that that that, that that's a nice change in psychoanalytic treatment really to, to say hey i'm a person too that it's been it's been a while it took a while for psychoanalysts to get around to that but that's right it's very very nice that you, the bipersonal field i really yes there is a bipersonal field here that's and, right and there's that's two right. there's two people trying to get better i mean the whole thing your your problems walk into your office is still a jungian concept that i learned as a resident and it's just like so true so true. Absolutely. And and these relational perspectives, these relational models where both people get to be in the room and there gets to be open exchanges when when it's in service of treatment um, is a, a total breakthrough. It's a total breakthrough. <laughs> total and, breakthrough. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a total breakthrough. Uh, I like to also say that uh, being a therapist is the only way to be in therapy without having to be the patient. And you know, when I, I do a lot of supervision and when people are burning out, when beginning therapists are burning out, something is going on that they're not being healed and not being balanced by, by this. I, I've been a, a therapist for now uh, more than 40 years or almost 40 years, I think. And um, I get energy from the process for the very reason you're talking about. It's I'm, I'm not trying to get healed by what I do. I'm, I'm certainly not my intention. My intention is to help others. But because of that openness, um, those open boundaries, which is what synchronicity is all about, is open boundaries between inner and outer uh, levels. Because of that, I can't help but grow with my people that are growing with me. It's and just, they want to help you grow. That's the funny thing. Just like infants want to help parents grow. I mean, yeah, so this they is can just... be better parents. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That there's a collective, there's a collective feeling about understanding at this very deep embodied level that when when one person of a in a relationship thrives, it helps other people thrive. And when uh, one person is not thriving, it pulls energy away from everybody. Exactly. Exactly. Now we got we got to get Together because you are very interested in fractals, fractals, ladies and gentlemen, fractals and synchronicity. And clearly, 
I intuit a connection between fractals and synchronicity, but let's start from the beginning. What are fractals and what do we mean by self-same? Okay. So fractals turn out to be probably, uh, from my perspective, the deepest pattern patterning of nature and the way that nature patterns uh, memory and identity of everything. So um, we have gotten diluted by our human made processes to think that um, to, to think that tables and chairs and other shapes that we make that are really regular that have clean boundaries are actually the kinds of shapes that are inherent in the universe but it turns out that this is just a, it's just a delusion of uh, our own creation because the universe does pattern very differently and um, fractals is sort of the, is the hallmark of, of the patterning of patterns. And, um, and so a fractal in the simplest form is the geometry of nature and it's a shape where the pattern of the whole is similar or identical to the pattern of the parts and it's a very very holistic <laughs> way of understanding patterning so instead of parts coming would together you, would you to say make, that would you say that again please of course the the simplest way to understand a, a fractal is that the pattern of the whole, the shape of the whole, is also the shape of the parts. And that can be true either in space or in time, hmm. or both, or in symbolic, in imagination. And I believe that perhaps intuitively, you understand fractals because this is how intuition works, period. Because intuition is the ability to have a tiny slice of experience and see the pattern of the whole right now, away. Now, that used to be called uh, inductive reasoning. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's a form of inductive reasoning, but it's more visual. It's being able to think of it in a, as a piece of a pattern right. that you can draw almost. And, and that piece is the same as the whole. Right. And that is uh, why fractals are better, best conceived in visual form, because especially with the ones in space, you can really see how the pattern of the part is the same as the pattern of the whole. Probably the simplest fractal shape that is also uh, the most universal is a branching pattern. So if you think of the V of a branch of two branches of a tree, and then that V, each of the pieces of that has smaller branches that form other Vs and smaller branches, and it keeps going out to the twigs. Um, that is that branching shape is the same shape that uh, we use in our lungs, in our uh, circulatory system. Uh, it's Nerv the nervous same. system, neurons. Nervous yeah. system, neurons. It's how rivers branch, and um, it's all over. It's all over. It's the. It's also uh, interconnectivity on the web. Is a branching would be a branching pattern like that as well. So it's all over the place. The, the pattern of patterns. I think that's the that's a key phrase in there. It's a it's a meta pattern in another that's way right. of saying this. And I, I like I'm a metaphysician. I like meta. <laughs> I like meta too, especially because therapy is uh, talking about the patterns of patterns in people's lives, right? Yeah, and yes, yes, it's very meta, very meta communication. It's all like around meta. So uh, process, it's all about process. All and, about process. Yes. So the pattern of patterns. I use. I was using synecdoche, a long, long word for the same thing. Uh, yes, because I love seeing pattern of patterns, but the what you're doing now is getting the fractal as a better way of thinking about patterns of patterns, but I mean, better. Yes. 
it's visual. by better by better well it's visual on the one hand but it's also universal on the other hand uh -huh. and it's a way that because it's it both connects math and science with subjectivity it is a better language that that is cross disciplinary that really biologists physicists um psychologists artists all can share uh, that cross connection this what i'll call transdisciplinary is what i think of as uh, coincidence is doing as well that's right they they do do this and they're be it, it's all about boundary crossings isn't it and and um the uh, crossing boundaries where we think there's a boundary and then suddenly there isn't one where there's a resonance between two sides of the, of the boundary now that's and, what now that's what we have to get to now because yes. that's that's very important um we've we've established and i'm going to go a little slowly for my mind here is that we're talking about pattern of patterns that fractals are patterns of the patterns that we see that it's the way let me say the universe does things i mean from for me the the fun was seeing the pattern on a snail the spiral on a snail yes. and the spiral galaxy as having uh, the same kinds of uh, the same pattern uh, that, that spiral. So that's where I kept getting into it. Uh, right. And I wanted to have that as a cover, of, a part of my cover of my book, I have a spiral in the ground of the snail and the spiral galaxy. So, right. so, so the, another version, and this is what we should do first before do the go ahead. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah I, before we do the boundaries, because that's important about the synchronicity. I want to be able to talk about the the other uh, basic patterns that fractals create. Spiral, certain spirals being uh, one of them, and right. you, branching is one spiral. Certain spirals are another. Well, let me say something about the spiral pattern because yeah. I think it's a very good one to start with, as you say, uh, because the Fibonacci numbers are are part of that, and that is has everything to do with sacred geometry. And so um, on the one hand, we have been blinded to fractal geometry because of Euclidean geometry, just the regular stuff we have all learned in school. But on the other hand, even the people in ancient Greece, the mystics in ancient Greece, recognize the specialness of these patterns. And that that uh, spiral pattern that you're talking about um, is part of sacred geometry that's been used in art and it's been used in architecture and it it is was considered divine proportions and um, now we know that those are all connected to fractals so they're all um, they're they're all like fractals so the the part in the whole of that uh, spiral is a growth pattern so both growth patterns and decay patterns have fractal shapes and that one has it because the snail is able to grow um, with the same relationship between the part and the hull so you can see as this at it's the it's the same proportions and the same real each each part bears the same relationship to the hull as that as that snail grows and that's how we all are otherwise we wouldn't recognize one another there's something that stays the same even though we change and that's what that's very much what fractals do now that 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 phrase is an from an axiomander the uh the only constant is change or ever change ever changing yet ever the same exactly those, those are all greek ideas that now we're being able to say what the fundamentals of that that are yes. which is these fractal patterns which now, is not all yeah. spirals not all spirals are are fractal based no not all spirals but but that that one that you're talking about the archimedean one is uh is a fractal base yes so, so yes. i want to be clear about that like the the spirals of dna are not the same as these right and they're not they're not and and some but those are that's a pretty basic spiral too. that helix the double the, the helix thing is a pretty basic right spiral. and and dna i mean that's the fractal process even though that spiral itself isn't a fractal spiral but but dna the way that dna keeps getting recombined generation after generation is also a fractal process 
Uh, this is like a bit mind blowing uh, for this mind talking to you here, because I've been, I've, I've been uh, Diogenes looking for the honest guy with my lantern, trying to fit, trying to be able to to see the underlying pattern of all this. That's what I'm after with uh, yes. with coincidences, because coincidences have for centuries shown people basic patterns in life if you pay attention to them. And here, uh, coincidences are pointing to synchronicities are pointing to Winter. fractal patterns as basic to them as well so you were let's do a few more basic fractal patterns and then go to the boundary crossing okay um here's a here's a, a good fractal pattern so pretty much everything in nature is fractal um one example is clouds the shape of clouds okay so this is um what's interesting about the shape of clouds so so what that means is that if you take a tiny little portion of a cloud and you take the broad horizon of a cloudscape it will have a self-similar pattern so the shape of the little part will be very similar to the shape of the whole and you can see that with different kinds of cloud formations that there there is an internal resemblance uh, to to the whole now within when, one cloud or among clouds well one cloud bank yes because there are different you know like a, a different kinds of clouds with yeah. different weathers will it'll but it's all internal to itself so um yeah within a single sky we'll say that it, within a single cloud formation okay within a single it, cloud, cloud formation, formation it's now, so I, similar I, I i like looking at clouds and i've had some <laughs> relationships with clouds actually feeling well, between them me and them Oh, well, that's very interesting because we all project into clouds, right? We all see things in clouds. And I think, well, first, let me say one thing that's interesting about the fractal nature of clouds is that before radar existed, when pilots would go into a cloud bank, um, it was very dangerous because of the loss of perspective. And that's because when the shape of the part is the same as the shape of the hull, you can't get oriented inside of it. There's no way to use a visual part of it to get oriented. And so um, it, the, that was what was important about radar uh, being, being invented to help uh, that, people. That's an amazing visual you just did here. Good, yeah. Be, be, being a pilot in a cloud and it all looks the same. That's right. It all looks the same and you can't get oriented. And so, um, but huh. we all project into clouds, right? So we see elephants and we see little people and this sort of thing. And it turns out that there's a reason we project into clouds, which is there's something about a fractal boundary, which fractals appear at the at the edges of things and they change our way of understanding thingness to the importance not being the thingness but being the way the thingness is the edge the edges of things that's where the action happens everywhere in in the universe in nature um and and it turns out that the rorschach which is a classic uh, projective test in psychology where you look at an ink blot and you project into it, they also have fractal edges and it's the fractal edges. This has now been proven by uh, Richard Taylor, who's a physicist that studies fractals and their psychological impact, that um, it is precisely the fractal edge uh, that is why we project into the Rorschach, it's why we project into clouds and it's the openness of the edge. You're actually seeing and perceiving the openness. And so the inside of our minds gets projected out into nature in this way. And there's a self-similarity between what we see up there and what's going on inside our minds. And that's really very much what coincidences are about too, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> That's what coincidence. So what I was what I felt with this 
this one cloud was an, an erotic sensation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know if we should unpack the contents of your mind or not. <laughs> well, we're not, we don't have time for that right now, but <laughs> that, I, it, what you're saying is the fractal edges of that cloud. Right. Uh, allow penetration yeah i see where you i see where your imagery is coming from <laughs> allow mind penetration yeah we can go there we did we just went there so so it wasn't a property of the cloud itself it was a projection of me right, uh, right. and i like to think i was having a relationship with the cloud Right. Well, it's both. It, 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 it couldn't happen without the cloud. So, you know, it, that was truly a, a creation of both of you, that kind uh, of projection. But it's the edges of that cloud that allowed me to. Uh, that's right. The, and that's what we have to talk about next is uh, now that we've done several and there are more basic fractal patterns out there for us to talk about, but we'll have to leave some of them. Uh, unless you can just list some of them, because I'd like to Wait, know. Do you, do you want me to give a psychological example of uh, an, an easy example that of of self similarity and yeah 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 psychological? Okay, so this is a story in in I tell in one of my um, books about a woman who came into my office back in the days when I could see people in person uh, and turned on an instead I have in my waiting room a little red light attached to a light switch and she forgot to turn it on and this is someone who uh, was always on time and always very precise about her, her appearance etc cetera, etc cetera. and so something told me intuitively she was out there um, I just kind of had a feeling and so I opened the door and brought her in and um, asked uh, I, 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 here, I'm going to pause you for a minute because yeah. what what you said is that uh, uh, intuition is is fractal yes like and so yes. your intuition gave you uh, some kind of fractal shape that allowed you to believe that she was out there. Yes. Can you describe what that might have been, that fractal shape inside of you that was your intuition? Um, you know, I think if I if I tell the rest of the story, I can then go back and tell you what the shape of that is, because what you're asking for is exactly what the content of what what happened next was good if that makes sense so oh, I, do, I do that regularly okay good <laughs> yeah so which is that it was a fractal process right there right that you intuited something that was about to come out essentially in oh, good. the story so so when i brought her in it was a judgment call do i do i mention the uh, the fact that she forgot to turn on the light. And um, part of me said no, because it will shame her. She's very into perfection. But another part of me said yes, because there's something important about it. So it turned out she was out there musing on a dream that she had had the night before that essentially was about invisibility, where she, she was, there was a glass pain between herself and her boss and she's waving and her boss doesn't see her so um so uh this, so she forgot to turn on the light she was invisible to me so what i said to her was are you having some issues about invisibility and what she the first thing she told me was about that dream. And then we got to look at how she felt invisible with her children because they were all grown and she didn't she didn't have to caretake them anymore, et cetera, et cetera. So the session proceeded to be all about this very central core issue of invisibility. And it started with a tiny little way she was invisible to me by, um, you know, by doing the light. And so going back to your question, and I haven't thought about this part of the story before, but it's it's a good it's a good part. What alerted me? Well, somehow she was both invisible and visible to me at that moment. 
And so there was the resonance of that theme of invisibility, visibility. She appeared to be invisible, and yet I sensed she was visible, and that was the truth of it. And that's what the story was all about, it, and that's her it's central the, issue. It's the sensing of her visibility when you're sitting in that office that I'm asking about. Right. What does that look like when I see these patterns it's weird because it's it's not for me um it's not a real visual thing it's like a visual sense of a concept i i don't know if that makes sense i see these patterns but it's not with my eyes well I, for me it's the emotional kinesthetic uh it's like i feel it and uh it moving uh it's uh -huh. like it's like a dance pattern without in your body in yeah. your body it's yeah. The, it's, yeah that's my, not me mine is disembodied mine's in my head and it's uh it's visual it's more visual and dis, it's more disembodied but people have uh you know you said it, I, you said it wasn't visual it's visual without my eyes it's vi oh, so it's, we call it your mind's eye uh we yeah. can say that yeah. it's something that you can see it's it, so yeah. it is visual yeah um, it is somehow you saw her there in some form or another yeah uh, in that in your mind's yeah. eye i think it's an important phrase this mind's eye thing because we got to get more tuned into the third eye which is right. part of the mind's eye thing so right. yeah so and yeah so that's the way and it's a very important to define the input methods that people have for right. registering these things, just to right. know what's your way of doing this. That's right. Everybody has a different way of embodying or experiencing intuition. Well, I think uh, there are categories of those things. I mean, I, yes, uh, there are. I, I just you just reminded me of a patient of mine where she she asked me, does she make is this making sense? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, especially younger people, ask that a lot. But this one had that quality of of the fractal you're talking about. It seemed like something. I I I think it, I call it like um, fishing in a manhole. Like um, it's a manhole cover pulled back, and it like pulls you're pulling on something, and it comes out, and you see this big fish. Those are my <laughs> metaphors of it. But for you, it's a cleaner view here, yes. and you really helped me when I interrupted you about uh and you were about to tell me something that was directly related to what i was asking that that i could pick up a little bit of that shape yes. and, and that it was coming but i did this with a friend of mine and she said i'm just about to tell you that and i <laughs> i think that's to be able to know that i'm doing that maybe i keep my mouth shut sometime and just wait for it to come <laughs> Yes, except your enthusiasm is contagious. So I think it's fun to do it to him. I think it's fun to embody the very processes that that you're, you know, we're interested in talking about because I, it's a way it's a way it makes it real. It exactly. It real. So let, let, let's move. Let's move on now, because we're getting to the question of boundaries. Um, yes. And one of the things that you've written is there's space between fractals. Right. I well, said, what? The space, it's the space between everything. It, you know, it's there, there is like a figure ground reversal in how we conceive of things from paying attention, say, paying attention to you as a person and me as a person, and we're coming together in a relationship to uh, the relation, each of us is emerging out of the relationship, which is bigger and more whole than either one of us. Uh, that is the perspective change that I'm, I think is really important and the way that nature works. And so our please, relationship, please, re please repeat that. Okay. There are two ways of looking at relationship. One is a linear reductive way where you and I are separate people and we're coming together and we're making two people talking in relationship. That is the sort of traditional Western mind way of looking at we have separate boundaries, etc. But 
that is actually not how our minds, bodies, and souls work at all. And the relationship between us is the space between us, right? You and I are in relationship, and it's the space between us that's defining the relationship. It's how we are coming together in the space that's between us. And it turns out that the space between us is where all the action is. So when you were talking before about therapy allowing two people, it's allowing uh, recognition that the space between will carry each of us. If we're having a good conversation, that conversation will take each of us somewhere we've never gone before. If we're, if we're both sitting here defended and flat, then we are really just two people that are, are talking at each other, but we're not using the space between us in the way that really is dynamic and powerful and the stuff of uh, coincidences, which involves these open channels between us. And where do fractals fit into those open channels? Well, um, so, so self-similarity is a kind of, um, it's, it's a kind of symmetry with itself. It's a kind of resonance. So um, when there are resonances, when there are uh, patterns of identical processes that happen or similar processes that happen, we're getting into self-similarity, we're getting into fractal dynamics. And so um, the resonance in, between your brain and my brain is, um, part of, I believe, is actually uh, a, the underlying foundation for your picking up um, what I'm about to say. And in fact, now that we have advances in hyperscanning, which is this really exciting new um, field of uh, brain imaging, which is the ability to image your brain and my brain at the same time in context while we're in relationship, um, we can see these resonances. So our brains are going in sync. When people watch a movie together in a theater, their brains go in sync. Um, and when the brains go in sync, it is a self-similar resonance between us. And it's interesting that um, the way that my brain parts of my brain talk to each other inside of my head is exactly the way my brain talks to your brain in terms of these resonances. What is resonance? Um, resonance is when a pattern, when, when a pattern triggers another pattern. So, um, okay. Let's go to sound. I think sound is a better place. For it's the easiest right? place, but these visual, the visual, the visual ones are really challenging. Well, the visual would be um, you. You can take a sine wave. If I if I um, hit a hit a um, um, a triangle, and that triangle makes a sound that keeps going. Um, that is a resonance. So there is a tone, and the tone will repeat itself and there will be a sine wave and that sine wave is very similar to a brain wave to different we have different uh, sine waves of different frequencies in our brain and that's how different parts of our brain communicate uh, with one another and uh, ultimately um, there's a transduction to consciousness as well so um, you can see there's a boundary crossing between what's going on in the mind and what's going on in the brain what's going on in the body and what's going on in the brain all of that involves um, these resonances at different on, at different le levels at different whoa 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 wait, 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 wait just a minute here just a minute here you just crossed the mind brain barrier right you just did the impossible uh how did you just said mind and brain are related to each other somehow through fractals and resonance oh yes absolutely there is um there's there is very interesting research. Um, a guy named Carl Anderson at Harvard has uh, looked at um, fractals. Has has suggested that fractals unify um, brain, mind, and behavior. And he ha he has done it by studying um, fetal so sheep um, REM cells, like single cells in. Uh, 
uh, sheep fetuses and um, during and, you and, said REM rapid eye movement, but yeah, rapid eye movement. So, so a cell, dreaming, a cell, a cell dreaming. has dreaming. So a cell has yeah. one cell has REM in it. Well, when when a, a when a brain is in an REM state, you can look at a single cell. Oh, okay. to look at you know okay. to look at the patterning and um it's been a while since i have I actually looked at, at this research but basically he's um hypothesized that there is a cascading up of pattern from the micro level of a single of a single cell to the macro level of consciousness um and behavior and um through these through these patternings um and and there are um other researchers that have been able to use single cells in uh, the hippocampus part of the brain um, to, to look at, for example, uh, how patterns, how rats going through mazes um, during the day have dreams, have dream states at night that consolidate the learning that they did during the day. And so now we're, we're, we are starting to cross from mind to brain and, and back again um, through looking at, at these patterns. And um, so, so resonances in the brain are um, like brain waves, you know, a different frequency of brain brain waves. And that's how we, um, consciousness is continually um, has, what what's called um, multi stability meaning there are patterns that form and reform and unform and so the same cells in the brain um, are reforming in different ways in different patterns depending on our experiences that are temporary patterns um, that are being carried by these waves and so uh, when uh, empathy between people is as much about uh, brain synchrony it's it's our brains going in sync and the more our brains are in sync the more empathy is is happening um and that's and, how and we understand one another it's through and that's what you're you use the phrase bridges between minds or bridges between brains mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, please elaborate on that i think you just talked about it um, well, it's, you know, there, the, the one thing that I find very, very interesting about fractal patterns is that they are, um, is that they capture paradox, they capture things that appear to be opposite. And so um, what I was talking about before, if we can look at, you know, you and me having a conversation, we can look at ourselves as separate people with separate lives and separate histories. And there is a boundary between us when we look at ourselves that way. But we can also look at ourselves as open conduits with one another. And when we are in conversation, when we're uh, interested in one another, when we're really engaged, more and more of our brains go in sync. And so um, the uh, bridge between us is both a barrier and an opening at the same time. And um, this kind of paradoxical both and uh, state is all over nature where things appear to be separate on the one hand, but they're actually completely interconnected. I happen to think that all of the universe is interconnected in this way and that um, that's why the whole fractal thing works because the universe is one thing on the one hand, but it's many things on the other hand, and it's both and at once. It's not either or this or that. It's both and, and that fractals help us understand the both end quality, how we can be separate and connected at the same time. So, one of, one of the functions uh, of coincidences is to exercise the mind. And one of the ways it exercises the mind is to be able to think simultaneously of polarity and continuum. There you go. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Yes. And and the, to me, the interesting thing about uh, synchronicity as opposed to, say, mind re reading. So I think everybody has... Um, 
I, I have branched out in my interest in clinical intuition. I started in a very uh, local way, you know, sitting in the room with someone and, and tuning in, being able to tune in. But as I've gotten more comfortable with the subject matter, I've moved into the paranormal kinds of things, which brings us to synchronicity and brings us to non-local things like uh, the dream I described, the tidal wave dream that my patient brought in of my from my childhood was is an example of non-local non-local um intuition uh that you know is um uh, so controversial to traditional science but i think this way of understanding non-linear contemporary science helps us model these non-local forms in ways that are no no longer mystical or magical they may be mystical but not magical um they're natural they're not supernatural uh in my in my book um but i think everybody has a characteristic form of tuning into these non-local intuitive um understandings and it has to do with personality just like we all have a stress we all have different ways of holding stress so some people get headaches, some people get backaches, some people get, uh, you know, stomach aches, some people have anxiety or depression, etc. And um, different people, some people are better at mind reading, some people uh, have more synchronicity. I happen to always have been a person where synchronicity is my big thing. Um, and I think, you know, I could analyze my character for you in a way that tend to tell you why but that's I think a different conversation um, but the to me what's interesting about synchronicity um, is that it's really uh, inner outer bound boundary rather than self other boundary that that we're looking at and once we go there um, we're, we're going outside the psychological realm you know we're going into like we're going into mind matter stuff we're going into brain mind stuff and that really interests me i think that that's so special that that, that opening um the idea that mind can can is is happening between things between self and world between self and other it's not just encased in my head what and what 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 about my relationship with a certain set of trees in the forest Mm -hmm. I have a relationship with them that's been going on for 10 or 11 years now, where we communicate with each other, where they help me with things that I'm dealing with, and they like me to sing to them. Uh, and, <laughs> and, it's, and how do I know that? Well, it's the same way I know a lot of things. I can feel it uh, from them. It's like with dance, I can feel the energy coming from them. I could see it sometimes they're vibrating and I almost like they're smiling sometimes. And, and, and we form a, a rhombus together. There's three of them. And I form the fourth point in the rhombus and that we have this kind of connection among us where we can feel like I'm part of them. And I become a tree sometimes and I can have my branches <laughs> up in my dendrites up in the sky reaching for something clouds or something and my roots deep in the ground so I'm a trunk with a connection both up and down. How, how is that uh, fractal. <laughs> okay, guess what my nickname was as a child. Tree lady. Tree. Tree. Just tree. 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 My brother used to call me tree. My Terry turned into tree. And I drew my this prototypical tree and uh, which my I think my brother still has hanging somewhere. Um, uh, that I got distracted by <laughs> that as you're telling that story. But a tree <laughs> is okay. So how is that fractal? Well, the tree of life is uh, probably this the central most um, symbol of pretty much every religion has a tree of life uh you know the the ancient uh judaism tree of life i, I just it's my favorite it, hebrew song it's a tree of life to those who grasp it right and the tree of life the that tree of life as a symbol visually you can see the fractal roots you can see the fractal branches so that the roots are fractal going down and communicating now we know that those roots communicate through algae and all that stuff if you've seen that wonderful of course 
Yes. Okay. And um, but then we the whole uh, mystical phrase as above, so below uses yeah. the right. The the branches having the same pattern as the roots yeah. um, is a mystical as above, so below. So that links it to the spiritual level of God where uh, humans are uh, created or, or creation is in the um, shape of God. Well, that's a fractal concept, isn't it? It is. Very all of it so. is a fractal right it's well, so well, similar that, that we're mirrors that are a mirror that's been broken and we each that's... have our different shapes that somehow fit into the whole right uh, i'm asking about the space between me and the trees that we're talking about ah well you're resonating with the trees in in some very very deep way and that i think you're tapping into like tree of life stuff you're because your interest in synchronicity um is such a you know a, a, such a basic pattern in the universe and a pattern that reveals something about the universe that other patterns don't since it it reveals the interconnection between what's inside our minds or our psyches or our souls and what's outside in the material world so and that and that self other that self uh, the the word environmental Mm -hmm. has mental in it <laughs> <laughs> i never thought of that but you're right it does doesn't it <laughs> and environment means around surrounding so oh cool yeah i like that surrounding yeah. the mind that right. word means uh, right and, and that's that's a that's a uh synecto key or even a fractal for uh what we've been talking about yeah yeah it's surrounding the mind but it's also interpenetrating the mind so it's both Arts. Yeah. It's and I love the notion of interpenetration. I think that interpenetration is then and I know you can go erotic with this one, but um it's I, I it's, can, yes. I, I can. I, yeah. <laughs> it's um in therapy, it's sort of uh it's the deepest level of working where where I'm fully feeling the people I'm working with inside of me and they're fully feeling me inside of them. And that's the and when that happens, there's often a flip that happens between inner world and outer world. And that's when synchronicities um, often occur in a patient's life when they're working at that level and suddenly they they're external environment becomes a mirror of their internal environment oh yeah yeah oh yeah that that mirror the external reflecting the internal right I mean, i'm reading this book called the magicians and it's a trilogy um and i read parts in the book that are saying what's this uh that there was one section where one of the characters was seeing uh foam creating hebrew letters in the foam wow and i had seen in a beach in bolinas digging in the sand three out of the four hebrew letters for yod hey vav hey for the name of god, one of the names of god i saw that in the sand so and i'm reading a book that i was reading when i saw them now <laughs> when i saw them then wow. so how is that fractal well, their resonance is all the you know you're, you you keep um, the that say, that self similar shape keeps repeating itself in multiple <laughs> places, and you're perceiving of that. You're perceiving that. So this there's this uh, global pattern that you're picking up on that links your history with your current moment with the thing you're reading it's you know etc cetera, etc cetera. no wonder um, you're so excited about fractals i finally get the idea oh uh, yay I so mean, that's good yeah that is good i mean i it is very good um i, I think i got some of the idea here because it's kind of like a a little a clue that i've been looking for to understand because i kind of sense something like what you're right. talking about right now you use do, we have to stop in a bit but we okay. we you use the term non-local um, right and it that usually has referred to like uh two small tiny particles uh being able to be influenced by each right. other one by uh, other at it at an infinite dis at large distances right. yes i kind of prefer and i kind of prefer uh fractal 
as an explanation for all these things? Well, I I do too. Um, and fractals, you know, can be found at the microscopic level and the macroscopic level. They they really are on all sizes. But I use that word non-local specifically because uh, it is part of physics and because part of my own research and work um, with uh, Jakob Shapiro in writing about this stuff and modeling it, we have linked this to um, to uh, quantum physics through non-local, you know, and non-local levels um, through Bohm, through through the physicist Bohm, and whose whose physics is actually very fractal, where the idea of an implicate order that is all curled up that has the pattern of the whole in it. Um, is is maybe what we're dipping into. Um, and so uh, we've just written about varieties of clinical intuition, um, contrasting local and non-local using this uh, using this uh, physics, phys physics uh, model to um, link fractals with um, you know, with with physics, basically, and 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 that yeah, level. so I, that's why I use it. I, but, I did uh, it, I did this in psychotherapy. I, I linked it to pharmacotherapy just to make it more legitimate, uh, and mm -hmm. a little bit of right. that is what I'm hearing from right. you. Um, uh, uh, what what I think you've gone to is yes, the Bohm's uh, impl implicate order is a yes. fractal. That's that's right. a, Is a fractal pattern and yes. fractal patterns in there. Yes, and so. When people talk about the universe did this for me, mm -hmm. I'm getting to be a little more sympathetic to that because the, the universe is a little bit on the large size. I can't conceptualize it, but you're helping me conceptualize it by yes. saying it, it's all fractals. Right. So when they say the universe, what does it mean to you when people say the universe, with, hey, sometimes it's almost like God has done this for me? Well, yes, it, to me, it means that we are sort of perceiving the pattern of the whole and feeling the pattern of the whole and feeling how the pattern of the whole uh, has an interconnection with um, with our own psyches or with our own corner of the universe. The danger there is when people take it like the whole secret thing, like as if um, as if we create the universe uh, and or the universe is simply dedicated to us in some way, in some conscious way. I don't believe that, but I do believe that when we're really tuned into ourselves, that we that that we can um, feel the frequency of of the whole and um, and feel how the whole is operating in the parts in various ways and in, in you know, so we're seeing a, a more refined level of patterning um, and yeah. that, that we can relate to that we can and relate I, to. Now, I, I have what I think is a better explanation for synchronicities than quantum physics. OK, yes, I you know, I agree because it's more macroscopic and quantum physics is microscopic and we don't have access really directly to that level, but we do have access to fractals, so to the level of fractals and to how fractals transect all of the levels. So, yeah, I agree. I think it's a fabulous. It's, it's, a, it's, it's much better, but I'm going to add something that is pr primary. OK. The predisposition to notice is right. primary is primary right uh, for the person but what you're telling right. me is that it's out there already and that's yes. that that's been my kind of like stumbling yes. along trying to figure out what's going on around here because i'm i don't know I, i've been doing this because i'm curious about what's happening right and uh, and uh, jeff mishlove uh, suggested you to me and he's a tough sell sometimes and you you got him inter in regard to synchronicity. He's only had one synchronicity in his life, a big one. Oh. Uh, and he's been involved with others. But yes. you gave him an idea and you're giving me even a broader idea about yes. how best to think 
about synchronicity, coincidence, intuition, which is all part of this right. thing. That's right. the, the ability to sense is fundamental. That's why it's psychological. Yes. That's why they're so psychological, these things. You've got to have the predisposition to pay attention enough to your intuition or your things you see right. to notice the pattern. Yes, that's already there. That's there everywhere. And I, I think it's, I don't believe in uh, uh, randomness. I, I think it's all interconnected and that this kind of patterning we could perceive everywhere if, you know, we were open to it. And if we are open to it. To it. And the Coincidence Project yes. is intent on illuminating the currents that unite us and connect us yeah and yeah. you and you are giving us a nice visual here about how to think about that yes uh, i think i think it helps people to have um a, a real sort of physical model for how this can work instead of thinking of it in airy fairy terms because then um that gets that complicates it. I, you know? I agree, but that's the closest anybody could, they, some of them could get to right. think about it in the universe doing this for me thing. Right. Because it's a very self centered version of things. And uh, I, I, I wanted right. to be able to get away from it, but it's about you too. So yes. to be able to get the right balance is what we're talking about. There's a lot more that we can talk about. Um, but let's end it with having our audience hear something about you personally, like a personal thing about you. A that, personal? That, that about Terry, about Terry, like, you know, just something in your life that uh, like stands out to you that you're willing or to tell people about just if we want to remember you, to remember <laughs> you very intellectually clear. Uh. here. But what about yeah. you as a person? Well, me as a person, um, I would say I, um, I I have very, very broad interests. And so um, and I at this stage of my life, I strive to be in, in a state of flow all the time. Um, and so I move from one thing to another, but I, I like to think about my whole life in, uh, creatively. I, I think about my psychotherapy as an opportunity to be creative and help people grow and, and recreate themselves. Um, and then I try to do that. I, I dance almost every day, ballet. Um, I've been a yogini for um, more than 40 years. Uh, I draw, I write, and I kind of go back and forth between these things. And um, there's something about, you, you know, uh, activities of the body, activities of the mind, um, all and creativity, connecting it all together. Um, that m makes me just sort of want to have a life of passion or, or have a life of passion um, as much as possible. So uh, that's something about me personally yeah well you're a resonating being by by doing all these different activities which have a fractal shape that's in common that has to do with your particularly energy your particular energy pattern in this world yeah i think that's that's a good way of, of viewing it so i see you think visually as well and uh i, I yeah yes i i and kinesthetically and, and kinesthetically right the, and you're good. into dance too and, yeah, and i played football yes. and I, I thought that was a dance sometimes running with the football there was kind of a <laughs> sure. ballet version of that um so and i was a rock climber which is a ballet which oh, is also a, a version of, of dance oh it is yes it is well terry marks tarlow thank you very much for being with me today this has been the education I needed at a time that I could use it. So uh, I thank you very much for uh, for talking with me today. Well, it's been a pleasure to talk to you today. And I'm absolutely delighted that you actually felt a, a breakthrough in your understanding of this topic that doesn't nothing could gratify me more than to have you come out feeling like you understand not only more about it but can see the significance of it for for the work you're doing and i think it's really important work thank you this psychosphere.
is our mental atmosphere like a hologram of cosmic consciousness.